Hey guys, Frank Mancalusa from Garageaholic here. Today we are going to be taking our stock E30 late model taillights and we'll be transforming them into MHW replicas. Why are we doing this and why are we not just buying MHWs? Because they're damn expensive. They're about 2,200 bucks for a decent set and nobody wants a crack set of taillights. So that's the only way to get MHWs if you want them. So I'm gonna show you how to make the smoked factory look of an MHW taillight in today's video. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in an afternoon with simple hand tools. Now, one thing that I wanna tell you is you always wanna have a spare set of taillights before you start tearing apart your old ones. This here, I bought a brand new set of taillights. It's about 130 bucks a piece from ECS. And it's always good to have them as you um, use your car, if you continue to use it. But it's also a good peace of mind to know that if you do mess it up, at least you do have a spare set of taillights. So here is what you need to do the job. Replacement housings. These housings are the ones you're going to be sacrificing to remove the lenses from and then putting the salmon colored late model ta taillight lenses on top of that. These two lenses I received from eBay. There is a seller on eBay who sells not only clear ones, but smoked ones and also the salmon colored ones. And it is the salmon colored ones that you want to use for this to get the MHW look. There are tons of different things that you can do and variations you can do with these lights in order to get them how you want them to look. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to be doing MHW replicas, okay? So that's why I had procured the salmon light pink colored lights in order to do that. Now in terms of tools, you need safety glasses. You need a pair of snips for fine tuning the removal of the old plastic. You need your vice grips in order to, or channel lock pliers in order to remove the plastic as well. You need a drill bit with a, a drill with a half inch bit, a black marker, paint uh, tape, masking tape, Permatex adhesive sealant, and you need your three paints. The red paint is a VHT nightshades paint. That's your red tint that you're gonna end up using for the tail light. And then you have your engine where you're gonna have like a black semi-gloss paint. You can also use SEM39143 uh, paint for the black along the upper and lower parts of the, um, uh, the, uh, the, re the, the reverse light. And then of course you have your orange uh, turn signal which is going to be a metal cast, um, kind of like a, uh, uh, a shiny metal anodized coating paint. And then of course you have your Dremel that you use for the fine tuning if you need to, but you don't need to use the Dremel and I probably won't use it in my case as well. So now that we have all of the tools outlined in order to do the job, let's start tearing apart at one of these taillights. Let's just do one and get it done and then we'll compare against the other side. I wanted to highlight two additional maybe what if type things that you might wanna procure. First is a chrome paint. Now, when you remove the taillight housings from the taillights and the lenses are, are removed, you're exposing the, the chrome underbody that is the reflective material that the light is bouncing off of. You might find that sometimes that reflective body is actually compromised and then the black, black um, primer is underneath. So this actually helps to create recreate that chrome looking layer then you can put your paint on top of that. So just in case you might need a chrome spray paint. And then the other thing is actually a primer. This is like a windshield 3M primer, um, link down in the description of what this is. And the reason that I'm, I'm highlighting this is because I wanna take this and use Q-tips with this black primer around the outside perimeter of the taillight, and that's what I want to be the adhering surface that the Permatex clear adhesive uh, actually sticks to. It's kind of like um, when you install a windshield where you use this primer before you install the actual windshield to the body and it actually acts like a really, really good sticky surface so that the uh, Permatex clear adhesive makes a really good bond. So now we take our taillight and what we're going to do is drill holes. We're gonna be drilling half inch holes, one in each section. Now the sections are fused here, here, and here. They're not fused here or here, or even on any of the other horizontal lines. But you really need to take a very, very strong precaution about drilling through this right here. This section is your brake light, and there is an extra diffusing element behind this glass. If you drill and you go through it, you will break through that diffusing element, and if you want to remove that, that's fine, but for the purposes of the MHW lookalike, I am not going to be doing that. 
So I'm going to be drilling through only the first layer of tail light, the outer lens on this brake light side. So as, you're fe as you feel like you're going to be pushing through, make sure to stop because you will go through it. Um, on the other ones, you really don't have to be as precautious. So um, let's drill these through and then let's talk about really quick how to uh, break apart the plastic without damaging the black outer housing. <laughs> So now that I've drilled my one, two, three, four holes, now I can start working on the turn signal as an example. And basically you just want to take your channel lock pliers and just go in there and then just start chap chapping away. Chapping away, that's it. Bam. Right? And then once you make that hole bigger, it makes it a lot easier just to get the, get it all in there. This is where you want to use the glasses, guys, okay? Wear the glasses here because those little tiny plastic shards will get into your eyes. So just be careful. They fly as fast as you can't even see. Now I'm about five minutes in and I wanted to demonstrate something for you to identify why this is actually a pretty good, easy, nifty tool to use. And that's because it's the edges, right? Historically, what people can do is they can literally, they have done, is they've cut with a Dremel along the entire side. Now that's not a bad idea and you can actually um, nick this if you uh, don't do it right or you lose your steady hand. But to use the pliers and take this out in little pieces of chunks is really the way to do it in my opinion. And that's what I've been doing here. And as you can see, this whole line here was, is completely smooth and ready to go for installation. But I'll show you really quick how to do it. So I, ideally what you wanna do is you wanna grab this and you kinda wanna rock it a little bit and as you rock it, it comes out in chunks, right? Just like that. Just keep on, give it a good squeeze and take it out in a chunk. You gotta be really careful though and use a real steady hand. Sometimes you have to twist, but it should come off pretty easily. You gotta find a place to start it, right? And then you just kinda, there you go. See, kinda get, breaking it off like that. Empty it out, right? And then you can use the Dremel to sand that down if you really want to. But this, is, this takes a lot of the work out of it. There's a good one right there. Gets, gets us right down to a nice flat surface, which is where the black plastic originally was. And this is what I'm talking about, the, the plastic flying around. You just have to be really careful um, about the plastic flying and getting into your eyes. So please use uh, protective eyewear when you do this. Perfect. So most of this taillight is complete. A couple things I wanna talk about. First, is that it took me about seven or eight minutes in order to drill these out and start peeling away most of the major stuff. That's not a lot of time. I do need to fine tune all these edges. That will take some time, probably another 15 minutes to do that. So you're looking at about 25 minutes total per headlight, per tail light in order to remove all the entire lens. That's not that bad. Second thing I want to talk about is that if you have issues with your reflection areas, right? This is the reverse light right here. This is the uh, tail light and this is the turn signal. As you can see on the turn signal, I had water or a leak down there at some point and it wore away of, of all of the reflector in, uh, material. So what you might want to do is get yourself a can of the chrome duplicolor stuff, right? Um, and basically what you want to do is you want to make that reflective again because when you spray on your orange or your yellow or your red turn signal paint, it's, like it's kind of like a, a transparent paint and that will not fill this, uh, this black. In fact, you will notice it still. So all you want to do is basically just get more reflective material on that and then you spray over that and it'll look seamless. So I need to do that as well. I'm probably going to end up doing it for the whole thing actually just so I can get a really perfect um, uniform base coat down so that the reflective material that I spray on top of that is going to have really nice uniform coverage. All right, so now the fine tune touches have been made. You can see that there's still a little bit of um, uh, taillight lens along the edge and that's okay because we're gonna end up painting that black 
That whole edge needs to be painted black along with the center ribs and we are going to end up putting silicone over that anyway. So there is going to be no trace of this old tail light around. And um, so now what, we, what I want to do is just kind of spray paint these guys just to make sure that this blackness that's in there is going to have a really nice um, place to adhere uh, the transparent paint. So now so far I have approximately 25 minutes invested into this tail light so far. Now, you don't have to do this step, but I want to do it. As I said earlier, I am going to paint these two sections, the chrome colored paint, just so I can have that uniform texture and color that I want when I put the transparent versions of the paint on top of it. So, in order to do that, you're just going to start taping around the entire circumference, or perimeter rather, and then you're just gonna paint all this as one separate area. So let's continue to tape. Well, apparently one coat is all we needed and it looks nice. See, nice and uniform is what we're looking for here. And that allows a really, really good base for the, uh, the turn signal light and the red tail light. So it'd be perfect. And we don't really need to put too much on because it already was chromed out. Okay, so many coats and many hours of waiting and putting another coat on, I finally am left with this result, which is pretty good. I'll give myself a B plus. Laying this paint is very difficult. It's not like laying regular spray paint. First, this is like an anodized coating, so it is a little bit more difficult to lay the paint. You have to do it in very light coats, because if you do this in too heavy, it will actually run. And that's what happened on my test light, and I don't want that to happen. And here, the same thing. You just gotta do it really light. This is a translucent coating. So you have to take very special care in doing very light coats. But now that we have this part of that tail light done, now we can do these two sections, this section right here and this section right here, and that'll be black. So we're gonna be doing a gloss black in both of those sections. And of course, this whole ring around and each of these center sections will need to be black as well. And then in the final stage, we're gonna paint this curvy area here black. That is the MHW look. So that's what we're gonna end up going for. All right, now is kind of the moment of truth where we take off the rest of the tape. Although you're gonna notice I don't take the tape off of the reverse light yet because it's still a little bit, it's a little bit wet. Um, so now what we need to do is we take our black um, paint pen and the paint pen is used to handle all of the little detail areas that you really don't want any black spray paint to get into. If you look over here, you'll see that um, I was able to successfully paint this little area here without removing the orange anodized paint from the, uh, from the light. So this is actually quite successful, but the rest of this here is all gonna be painted black in order to get that really nice outline that I'm looking for to recreate the MHW look. So let's start it off here and then I'll go, in, go into a time lapse for the rest. You can see basically you just kind of paint it like this. Right. You, can be, you can be generous with it, you know, but you just want to make sure that, and you don't want to get this part, right? This outer bevel is going to end up getting painted the SEM black trim paint that we, that we all love to use um, on our black trim. But this is going to end up getting painted black, so that when you put the lens over it, it looks like a clear um, uh, line in the sand between um, both of the uh, both of the interfaces. And this 
is the final product after all of the black markings and black paint has been applied over the entire perimeter of the light. All right, so now what I've done is I've taped most of the headlight and um, I've just, I wanna paint the outer bezel with this SEM 39143 black trim paint. Now it gives us really a nice overall look, nice OEM finish to the outer bezel before we start doing our Permatex adhesive. All right, two coats of the SEM black trim paint should do it, and it's still a little bit wet, needs to dry out, but so far, it's coming out pretty good. All right, so now that everything is dried up, we can start removing everything. And then, couple of touch-ups here where the tape ended up pulling away some of the paint just for continuity and making sure that everything in the surrounding area is black. Now let's work on sealing. So now we've reached the final step and this is the most critical because this is what prevents condensation and moisture from getting back into the taillight which could be disastrous especially after all the work that you put into this. What we have here is our completely prepped taillight with the orange turn signal. We have our salmon colored tinted lens. I have some weights here. I have my Permatex sealant. And then I have my primers, like a windshield primer here. And of course, a couple of Q-tips. The idea is that after test fitting the cover, and I'm not gonna show you what it looks like yet. I'm gonna kind of keep you guys in suspense. You take the primer and you dip it around the entire outside perimeter, let it dry, do the same thing for the, for the outside of the taillight, let it dry, and then you put a very fine bead of sealant around the entire thing. Do not use your finger to smush it down, leave the bead as a nice tall bead, and I'll show you that in a second. So what I wanna do is go into a time lapse of doing all that and show you exactly what that product will look like right before we make the two surfaces and then put the weight on it and let it sit overnight to dry. Some might call this the moment of truth. I'd like to call it the moment of truth as well. Pick it up, there we go, it's about better. this down just to make sure that everything is making good contact and they have really good pressure all the way around use your finger on the back side here to clean all that up use a q-tip if you'd like to kind of get all that out roll it up as you're doing it that way that way you know that you don't have to worry about the black trim again Here it is. Next day, everything dried out. Looks pretty darn good, man. Wow.
Now let's see how all the lights work during the daytime. So you can see every light working here. The reverse light, the tail light, the brake light, and the turn signal. Now for the turn signal, I have orange bulbs, and I think I like the way that that's gonna look. The brake light does not have red bulbs right here, and I need to get red bulbs for that, because as you can see, you can easily see the white light passing through it. It's probably gonna be even more prominent at night. So what I wanna do is wait until nightfall, and then do this again, and see how it looks, and you guys can be the judge. Well, at night, it's pretty apparent that the reflector on the uh, MHW replicas do not work. Okay, now you, so you can see my shadow, and you can see everything in the lights. You can see on the stock tail light, you can see the turn, the brake, the tail, and the reverse. And here, you can see the turn, the brake, the tail, and the reverse. Now, I know it's hard to see here, but this area here looks brighter than here, right? And I, I know, like I said, it's hard to see in this light here, in this camera, but that bulb on the brake light here, right here, is very white and very light, very bright, right? So I don't like that. Um, it's a lot different than the brake light that you see on, uh, on this side here. So this, I wanna get a red bulb here to see if that's going to fix the problem. Everything else I like. I like the turn signal being orange bulb and, and having it be the way it is. And I like the um, I like the reverse light and I like the tail light, but the brake light is the only thing that I have exception with and I need to have that be a red light. And if I can't get that be a red light, I might have a problem with it. So let's get a red bulb and see how everything compares. Here are the brake lights now. I like this much better. You can see right here, the light bulb inside is red. Light bulb on the factory is red. A little bit more diffused on this side than on this side, but you can see pretty easily here that it is much more defined. Let's take a look at, at uh, night. And here is the red light right there. That's the red bulb tail light on the MHW replicas compared to the stock. The stock is pretty nicely diffused and the, this is not nearly as diffused, but you can see the light in there is actually not like a white light anymore. It's more like a pink light, which is exactly what you're kind of going for. So yeah, it looks good actually. It looks much better than the white light. I think I'll stick with it for now and uh, see if this is something I want to use in the, uh, in the long term. So overall impression, they're okay. I'm glad I kept factory lights just in case. I can see why people want them. They are a lot of work. The late models are more work than the early models. I will not be doing this for anybody, so please don't ask. Is it worth 500 bucks for someone to pay to have somebody else do this for them? No, I think if you wanna do it yourself, do it. It's not that hard. And you can do this for $200, so it's really not that big of a deal. And you can tune it however you want, you can paint, Whatever colors you want, you can use different types of lenses with different tints on them in order to get exactly what you want out of it. If I were to do this all over again, I don't mind the salmon colored lenses, but I think that I might have wanted to choose the regular tinted lens or a clear lens and then tint it myself from behind. Um, I might actually try that um, an, an, another day and maybe just buy lenses and experiment with them to get exactly what I want out of this. Um, I think that the red bulbs really did make a big difference uh, in terms of the brake lights. Nobody wants to see big white lights when they're, when they're uh, behind someone who's braking. And uh, overall, I, I'm happy with the result, but I'm happy that I also have the factory lenses to exchange with. Guys, my name is Frank Macaluso. Any questions or comments on the late model MHW retrofit, please give me a call, give me a, give me a text, comment, like, and subscribe. My name is Frank, and I'm out of here, guys. Later.